Hello and welcome to Grocer Pod. My name is Sean Kasednar. Today I'm very excited to talk to Daniel Burris. Anyone who was at the Innovation Showcase saw his presentation on anticipatory grocery. Before we get to Daniel, I want to leave you waiting in anticipation. Uh, please remember to subscribe to Grocer Pod. Subscribing means new episodes will be downloaded for you automatically each week. You can find Grocer Pod on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or any other platform you use. Thanks for joining me today, Daniel. And first, please forgive me for that terrible joke. <laughs> no, it's all right. No, it's really a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so speaking of an anticipation, why did you title your keynote speech uh, at the showcase Antip Anticipatory Grocery Using Hard Trends and AI to Accelerate Innovation and Growth? Well, I was just opposing the idea of being a reactionary grocer. And I think many times what we do is we, we react to a disruption after it disrupts. We react to a problem after it happens. And agility, of course, has been the key strategy uh, to deal with rapid changes that you can't see ahead of time. And agility, of course, came from sports. The faster you can react, again, to a problem or a disruption, the more agile you are, the better. However, because of what's happening with AI and everything else, we are actually in a beyond exponential uh, speed curve right now. Things are changing faster than ever before, and just reacting after the fact is good, but it's no longer good enough. So what I did is I shared with them what I call the new key competency, and that is how to anticipate, how to anticipate problems before you have them, so you can pre-solve them. I mean, how many times have our listeners said to themselves, I knew that would happen, and I'm saying, well, then why did you let it? And you can anticipate disruptions before they disrupt, turning disruption into a choice. And I did talk quite a bit about AI, but I started, as you know from that subtitle, how to use hard trends and AI to accelerate innovation and growth. So let me just take a second on what the heck do I mean by a hard trend? I mean, it, it sounds hard, but what is that? And this is based on 40 years of research. Uh, the methodologies I'm about to share uh, and I shared in my presentation are being used by the Pentagon. They're being used by Google and uh, Amazon, but they also are being used by small uh, companies, including grocers. So you can do it. So here's the idea. Uh, every, uh, there's no shortage of trends. The problem is what trends will happen and what trends won't. And I've solved that. All trends fit into one of two categories. They're either a hard trend based on what I call a future fact. Now, here's what that means. Here's the litmus test. It can't be changed. It's going to happen. You can't do anything about it. Even if you're Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, it can't be changed. It's a future fact. And that gives you certainty in an uncertain world. The other kind of trend is a soft trend. And that's based on an assumption that may or may not happen. Now, it doesn't mean it won't happen. But there's a difference when it comes to uh, de designing strategies and innovations with low risk between certainty and uncertainty. By the way, uh, I love them both. What do I love about a soft trend? Well, if you don't like it, you can change it. What do I love about a hard trend? It lets me see change before it happens, giving me an advantage. So that was why I picked that title. And I'm going to turn it over to let you ask more questions. But uh, let me just make a statement right up front. The good old days of retail and grocery are not behind us. Actually, they're ahead of us. They don't quite look like what was behind us, although many of the things that we've done in the past, that human part of grocery, it's a very human thing, uh, that is still going to be important. The quality of our people and our culture and our grocery stores and how they serve people and the kind of experience we give them, that's going to be still very, very important. But as you know, of course, e-commerce, which is starting to become intelligent commerce, is going to be another new giant growth area. It's a both end scenario. So uh, there is more, based on what I just said, there is more opportunity today to not just change, but to transform grocery 
and retail than any other time in human history. We're doing things today that was impossible just two years ago. I mean, kids weren't using AI to do their homework two years ago. Uh, and, and of course, we're doing all these amazing things. But at the same time, two years from now, we're going to be doing things that are impossible today. That's why we need to have our opportunity antennas up as leaders and as grocers, because I have worked with grocers before, and I work in just about every industry. But I can tell you, we are very innovative. Why is that? Well, we have to be because we're competing and it's kind of been a low margin business. So we've been good at Dairy Deli. We have been good at having flowers. We've been good at having higher margin merchandise that we brought in. By the way, if you're not doing that, you should consider that. So there's many ways we can innovate. All right. Let me turn it back over to you. No, absolutely. That that was great, Daniel. Uh, listening to your talk uh, at the presentation and, and again today, it strikes me that the difference between a futurist and really everybody else is just how they view the, uh, the, the things that are coming. I mean, you mentioned these hard trends, these things that are going to happen. Uh, a lot of people are just going to look at that and say, costs are going to go up. That's that sucks. Uh, don't know what I'm going to do about that and be upset about it. And a futurist is looking that at, at that as an opportunity. You know, how can our AWG member retailers look at these hard trends and and gain a competitive advantage from them? Well, I think, again, one of the real powerful things is to get really good at whether you're talking about a hard trend or a soft trend. And remember, I like them both because you can change a soft trend to your advantage and a hard trend you can't change, but you can see it coming. So an example, um, and hard trend wise, uh, there are three categories that I shared. Uh, one is technology and technological change. And if any of you, I mean, I've been doing this for over 40 years. So if you've read any of my seven best-selling books, Technotrends back in 93, or, uh, or the last one, The Anticipatory Organization, which is just a few years ago, and they've all been great sellers um, in New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestsellers. My point is, if you've looked at that, you've seen I've had a track record of being right. But instead of me just saying, wow, I'm really cool, I'm right. What I was really excited about at this conference was teaching the audience and now taking a few minutes to teach our listeners uh, actually how you can do this, how you can be anticipatory versus just being reactionary. So the three categories, technology, amazingly predictable. I'll give you some examples in a few minutes. Uh, another one is demographics. You know, there are... Uh, Millions and millions, 68 million to be exact, in the United States, baby boomers, guess what? Chronologically, they're not going to get younger. They're going to get older. A lot of them are going to be retiring. And uh, now let me give you say, an example I gave to the audience. It's kind of a trick uh, test here, and I barely begun to teach this to everyone on this podcast, but I'll make a trend statement. A lot of baby boomers in the organization at all levels will be retiring soon, and they'll take their knowledge, wisdom, and experience with them when they leave. Now, the, when there's a comma or the word and, you probably have a hard and a soft trend in that statement, and separating them makes all the difference. For example, many people in our organization will be retiring who are baby boomers. Hard trend. Absolutely, that's going to happen. And they'll take their knowledge and wisdom with them. Well, that's soft. You could let them do that, or you could start mentoring. You could start some coaching. You have a database. You have a knowledge base. You have a wisdom base. And by the way, would that be good to have? You see what I'm, what I'm getting at? So Absolutely. when you separate those things out and you start having ways of dealing with either one, hard or soft. Yeah, uh, th that that makes a lot of sense to me, and I really like how you uh, how you tried to throw th throw that curveball to the crowd uh, w w with that and statement because it is true everyone's going to retire, and that's kind of what we focus on, and then we and we just assume that all of the consequences that come with that there's nothing to do about it, but clearly uh, there is a lot to th that that people can be doing. Um, well, you just said something really important, Sean. I want to point it out because you just said something that I didn't that I want to point out. You said a lot of people just assume. Here's what I'm getting at. A soft trend is based on assumptions. And assumptions may or may not be true. 
And one of the problems is a lot of our assumptions are based on all of our past knowledge, everything that's ever happened before. And our assumptions can be pretty valid, except we're in a new world right now. AI is changing everything. And it's not just AI, by the way. There's many technologies that's changing the game on us. And we need to know what the new game is. So I think it's important for us to elevate those assumptions by re-asking, is it still true today? I call that the difference between, to make it simple, a hard assumption and a soft assumption. A soft assumption, I'm using the same theme, right? So a soft assumption is something that you're quickly assuming is true, but you haven't checked to see if it still is. For example, you might think, boy, if I put my data in the cloud, it'll be less secure. Well, by the way, that a long time ago was true, but I'm a strategic advisor to the Joint Chiefs in the Pentagon. I'll tell you right now, they know it's better to be in the cloud than uh, on their desktop. So that is no longer true. We need to make sure that we're working on current facts. And as I mentioned, facts in today's world where we're getting a lot of our news from the internet and from especially social media, you need to check your facts, check multiple sources. Because, um, well, we brought up the subject of AI. AI can do amazingly fantastic, good, powerful things. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But it can also do amazingly powerful, bad things. And I would suggest that everybody listening to this is probably a good person. I'm going to assume that. I think it's an assumption. But I think we're pretty close I to being it's a accurate. hard assumption. Uh, well, I th- you know what? I think so. Because I think if you chose grocery and, you know, you chose serving people and in this field, I think you're probably in that zone. And, um, and so what I would say is that let's use AI to do amazingly wonderful things. But also let's protect ourselves from those that are working at using AI to do amazingly bad things, which means on a personal level and a business level, I want to operate under zero trust when I'm online. So if I read something online, or even if I see a video of a somebody, I don't care what it's, it's a presidential candidate or anybody else saying something, can I trust that anymore to actually be that person? I better double check that. I better triple check that because a, a school kid could do that today. So let's let's be careful. All right, everyone, you heard Daniel Burris. Uh, You don't need to trust me. You need to go and listen to every episode of Grocer Pod. He told you to do it. I'm not telling you to do it. Daniel told you to do it. That's the only way that you can be sure that the things that we're saying here are true. Well, I like the way you segued into that. And by the way, I think you're doing a great service here because it is about knowledge sharing. You're picking your guests well. You're a pro at answering questions. I can tell that already. And by asking the right questions, you can get really good uh, responses. So again, thank you for doing this on behalf of all those viewers and the ones that haven't even tried it yet. Absolutely. So you've mentioned AI a couple of times, uh, seamlessly leading me into the next topic. Um, Artificial intelligence is a term that's uh, been applied to seemingly everything these days. Uh, Grocery retail is a very tangible operation. What are the ways AWG members can use AI in their businesses? Yeah, well, I, I, uh, in my presentation, one of the things that I talked about is that uh, AI has been with us for over 40 years, actually being used. There are different versions of AI, just like, uh, you know, you had might have had a computer back in the 80s or 90s. But you know what? It wasn't as good as the ones you got today. That's because of the Moore's Law and processing power doubles every 18 months as the price drops in half. By the way, that also gives us a way of seeing the future. It gets more powerful and costs less every single year. And by the way, that's still going strong. So what I'm getting at is uh, AI in its initial was really looking at data and doing if then. If we do this, then this will happen. Or saying, you know, take a look at this spreadsheet and tell me uh, uh, what's the average price of or something like that. And there's some AI involved in that. But then we got into something called machine learning. That's where AI learns over time. So if you're driving a uh, a modern car today, let's say a Tesla even, uh, every driver, all the millions of drivers all over the world, every day they're driving, everything that they're driving, the videos, everything that's happening is going up to the Tesla mothership. (laughs) And uh, what it's doing is learning. 
learning about the roads, learning about the streets, learning about the hazards, learning about the bumps, learning about everything, getting smarter. That's machine learning. And it's true when you use Alexa or you're using uh, Siri or any anything like that. Then there's deep learning. And in deep learning, what happens is it can train itself. It can learn off of data and it can be guided uh, by humans or not. And the last big one that happened, and this was released back in November of 2022 by OpenAI, and that is ChatGPT, and uh, which is a generative AI. And it used all those things that I just mentioned, but it's doing something new, creating new content. Never did that before. And OpenAI put it out and said, here it is, it's free, go for it. And one of the things that I did is I did a survey in that audience. You were there. You saw me do it. And we we had people from, you know, all over the country, uh, leaders in grocery. And I said, raise your hand if you personally used uh, something like ChatGPT. And we had about uh, 65, 70 percent of the audience, more like 65 percent, raise their hand. And what I said is I asked the audience. If you have a close friend in this audience that did not put up their hand and you've used it, would you recommend it to them? Yes or no, say it loud. And you heard what happened. Everybody said, yes, use it. And that's because you don't get it if you haven't done it, if you haven't used it. So for those listening to this, you need to go to, uh, um, you know, chat.openai.com, get a free account. Spend that twenty dollars a month and get the free, get that upgrade because it's worth it, and just start using it, and you will start to experience what's happening. So, Sean, what I did to make it easy was I shared a uh, AI specific tools mm-hmm. that they can use to do amazing things, and uh, I'll tell you before we're done how everyone can get a free download of that because I shared that with the uh, audience as well. But what I've done is over the last year, a little over a year, um, myself and my team have analyzed over a thousand AI tools, over a thousand of them. By the way, some of these are free. Some of these have a free trial. And by the way, some of that then did you pay for? You know, they're 10, 15, 20 dollars a month. So we're not talking big expense here. And um, so it's the categories. What I've done is I've created a report. Again, I'll tell you how to get it in a second. And what it does is it gives you the top five in a number of categories of things you can use it for. And in this report, I even show you in case studies of how uh, organizations, retailers, and so on have used these. So I have the top five that lets you create a slide deck where you can just type in what you want the slide deck to do. By the way, if you want a graphic, just tell it what you want the graphic to look like. It can create it. If you want a little video in there, it'll actually make the video for you. And if you want to improve it, tell it how what you want to do to make it better. And bingo, it'll do that. I got the top five. If you need to make a video to post on social media because you want to recruit some uh, new young talent and the best way to find them is online on uh, social media, uh, I give you the top five that actually can create a video that says exactly what you want it to say. It's got a human in there, by the way, in any language, any, you know, either sex, uh, can be Hispanic, can be whatever you want, uh, and saying exactly what you want, pitching whatever you're trying to say. Then there's text to image. So you need to have a drawing or a graphic. I gave the top five there. You need to actually create a website. I gave you a, an, a, an app that can actually make a website for you. Uh, I gave you one to be able to summarize any document, by the way, including a long YouTube that you like, but you'd like to get a summary for it. I gave you Another category that I gave you is to create uh, voiceovers. I gave you the top five there to create unique music for your store. If you want to playing in the background without playing a royalty, Um, I gave you marketing, the top five marketing. And by the way, listen to this, everyone. It is killer. Great at marketing. Um, It also gave you the top five that can make code. So, you know, you don't need a coder. It can make the code and it can even debug the code. Um, I mean, 3D. So the way to get this report, if you would like to, is to, and it's a free download, go to AIStrategyReport.com. And for some reason, it helps to make the A and the I lowercase. 
So AIStrategyReport.com, cost you nothing. Take a look at it, look through it. You can see the case studies. If you like one of the tools, you want to check it out, just click on it and it'll take you right to that site. And I think you will be amazed at what you can do. And one more thing I want to say about it, and I'll turn it back over to you, and that is um, what AI does is it can get you 80% to what you're trying to do fast. 80% fast. By the way, that's called productivity. However, the last 20% is what your team and your people and you need to do because you got to check some of the facts that are in there. Remember, it learned from the Internet. It is a machine. It's not a human. It, it hasn't brought that text to life, although it's pretty good. Um, and what you want to do is uh, add your voice and your branding to it. So we aren't replacing humans. We're enhancing them. Matter of fact, I was being interviewed not long ago and someone asked me, will AI, uh, will humans be replaced by AI? And my answer is humans will be replaced by humans using AI. And I'll tell you, Sean, when I finished my speech, a young guy came up to me because a lot of people were asking me questions. And he said, you know, I've been using AI in uh, on my grocery uh, team because we have multiple stores. And wow, is it help? And you're right. It's 80 percent there. It still needs me. But it saved me so much time. And I've kind of now I'm kind of a lead guy in there. None of the other team members are using AI. What a shame. I can't get them to use it because it would save them so much time. I think you as a leader need to tell your team, hey, we need to start looking at this and using it because I'm not trying to replace you. I'm trying to make you more efficient. And when it comes to automation, wow, if you're doing anything repetitive, we need to automate that task so you are freed as a human to do higher level things. And uh, and so that's really important. Remember, we live in in a technical world, but we live in a human world. And it's still about relationships. All right. I know you want to ask a question. Go for it. Yeah, I think that 80 percent is is so crucial because when people hear, oh, I I used AI to do this, AI is going to replace that. It won't. Like you said, it'll do a lot of it. And if you can if you can have AI take 80% of the task and then you just flesh it out with the other 20 that makes it you or makes it your store, then now you just save so much time and you can be on the floor helping people, being a part of the community, being around the customers, doing the things that you got into grocery to do. You didn't. You probably didn't get into grocery to be back on your computer typing away doing who knows what and all the different day-to-day tasks that need to be done to run a store if you can figure out how to leverage AI to handle a lot of that, and then you just make sure that it's correct and finish and finish the job, then you can move on to the things that you are actually passionate about. And when it comes to running your store, Uh, speaking of running a store, uh, it takes a lot of time and we know that we know that uh, independent retailers don't have much, you know, after making sure that the shelves are stocked and all the employees are there, uh, there might not be, feel like there's a lot of time in the day to innovate. Uh, Daniel, what are some of the things that AWG members should be focusing their energy on when trying to accelerate growth and innovation when they, you know, are so strapped for time? I understand that. I've started six companies myself from scratch, so I understand how that can work. And what I would suggest is a lot of the things that you're doing Actually, you can save an amazing amount of time freeing you. In other words, let's give you time back by transforming how you do what you do. And I would start with ChatGPT. When I was finished, uh, there were a lot of people asking me questions after my speech. And they had a lot of different questions on different subjects. And of course, I gave them answers. But one of the things I said is, by the way, take that question, that exact question you just asked me, and put it into chat and see what you get, because you'll get some really good things. You'll get some things you have that are, ah, that's kind of close, but you'll find some jewels. So here's what I'm suggesting. Get, when you are trying to do something, I don't care what it is, throw it to chat first to stimulate you. Again, I'm not replacing you. I'm trying to save you time. And you can save hours and hours and hours a, a day, not just a week, by He's starting to use some of these tools that I'm talking about. I want to give you time back so that you can be with your kids a little bit more 
and uh, and do the higher level activities. And by the way, I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about your staff as well. So I would definitely do that. And if you're interested, you could always go to uh, uh, Burris.com, B-U-R-R-U-S.com. I've write uh, blogs and articles. I've written thousands of them. You can search them by subject. They don't cost you anything. I've got some other free tools in there. Take a look. I mean, I'm trying to help you and give you some tools and some things to look at. And don't forget to download that uh, that AI report that I just gave you. Yeah, uh, and I will be sure to link to both your website and that AI report in the show notes. Uh, Daniel, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I think that was really great uh, as a way for anyone that wasn't able to hear your speech at the showcase. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for listening. Please remember to like and subscribe to Grocer Pod. That way you can stay up to date on all the latest things going on around going on around AWG. Until next time, this has been Shanka Sednar for Grocer Pod. Thank you.